to let me know are we like extremist or is this actually a good idea everyone and welcome back to another video so i know that i have touched on this briefly once before regarding our utility bill situation i wanted to go more in depth with it and also give an update on what we talked about last week with our overtime challenge that we have going on so in 2020 we got two gas bills two months in a row and they were the same amount of money to the penny we got this one and we got that one immediately i knew that there was no way possible because your utility bills are never the exact same amount of money to the penny like there's no way so i knew that there was something going on with it i looked into it further right away as soon as i got that second bill and i even made a TikTok about it to summarize the whole situation last august or last summer was our first summer in this house so august when i got my gas bill and it was the same exact dollar amount to the penny of the prior month i decided to take another look at it so i ended up finding out that the only thing in this house that's powered by gas is our heat which we obviously weren't using in the summertime so how could i still be getting a bill because your utility company can charge you for nothing but fees Literally right here, usage base charges zero dollars. Usage July zero. This is our July bill, and this is our August bill. Same thing, did not use it at all. Zero, same exact dollar amount. So, of course, I call them like they're gonna fix this, right? They're like, nope, that's how it works. Even if you're not using your services, you have to pay for this fee, that fee, 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 fee. So of course that caused me to start looking back at some of my other bills and I'm like, so if you can charge me $35 for fees, how much of my usage am I actually paying for? Um, how about $12 out of $167? Literally that month, so this was my February bill, $12.70 out of $167. How is that legal? So let me be your example. Go look at your gas bill because the only option they gave me was disconnecting my services once a year when I'm not using it in the summertime and paying to have it reconnected, which would still be cheaper than me paying $35 for nothing every month. But it's just like, okay, so I have to go through that every single year. And why are companies allowed to charge you so much when you're literally not using their services? Like it's a scam. So they basically told me like there was, you know, that's just how it is. That's something that you do. It's almost like a subscription. Like even though you're not using the service, you still have to pay this monthly service charge basically for, for having the service like available to me. I guess if I wanted to turn my heat on, I could go and do it even though I'm not doing it. So that was super frustrating, but I spoke to a supervisor and I ultimately got them somehow to refund one of the months, which is nice and everything like that. But they also gave me an alternative. Seems like the main reason I was able to get them to agree to waiving one of the month's cost was because they don't even give you this alternative or they don't even tell you about the option of being able to disconnect your service temporarily so basically they said that if you want to you can call which of course at this point by the time i even found out about the situation it was already like September october so it was too late at this point to disconnect service because it was going to start getting cold again very soon this i believe was 2021 so in 2022 what i could do is call let them know i want to do what's called like a seasonal disconnect or temporary disconnection of service so they would make it so my service was not available to me and basically your heat is like turned off and you don't get a bill and you would have to call to have it turned back on. You don't have to pay to have it disconnected, but you have to pay to get it reconnected, which is about $50. Cost of just the monthly service charge that they were doing was about $35 at least. Even if I take four months out of the year and I'm not paying for that service, that's already $140 that I'm saving. 
take away the $50 or so, that's about 90 that I'm still saving. And I'm also not having to get a bill every month of the four months with this reminder that, hey, we're making you pay for nothing, basically. So in 2022 is the first time I did that. And I want to say it was like, I think at some point I kind of forgot that I wanted to get it done. So I didn't do it as soon as I wanted to. But within like a week or two of the weather being at least high enough that we're not like cold. I did disconnect the service. The last bill we got was June of 2022 and we ended up turning it back on in October of 2022, which I was kind of salty about. I wanted to last a little bit longer, but this last October was actually pretty cold. And I was actually even more salty because the apparently the, our gas company is only open monday through friday so when i was ready to turn it on and i called them on like a saturday or sunday they were closed it was freezing over the weekend and we just had to bundle up because we didn't have any heat so let me know what you guys think i feel like it's a great way to save money comment down below and let me know are we like extremist or is this actually a good idea the only person that doesn't use a blanket in this house is our youngest still he's two he, he sleeps in his crib so we just really bundled him up layered him up and he was fine all, really when he wakes up he's always super warm anyway so it really all worked out and then when i kind of reached out to them like hey i tried to turn my service back on the service, I couldn't even turn it back on because you guys are closed on the weekend. They actually ended up waiving the cost of the reconnection fee for me in October because of that. I guess they saw how low the temperatures got. Honestly, I want to say it probably got to like 35 or something outside. So inside it was still pretty warm. It was warmer than that. Maybe like 45, 50. So this year in 2023, I knew that I wanted to actually be very calculated about when we got it disconnected this year because like I said last year, I feel like I could have done it a couple of weeks earlier. So my plan was to do it May the 12th and then I saw like in the weather it was actually going to be and that's the hard part like where with where we live at it's just like one day it could be super like cold and then the next day it the low is like 50. We ended up having it officially disconnected on the 26th of May so Friday and it's official we got the confirmation and everything that the account is closed and of course when we're ready to reconnect it we just have to call them and pay the 50-ish dollars and I'm happy because I'm hoping that this October will not be another cold one and by the time that we're ready to reconnect it it'll be closer to November rather than October and we can go five months without that bill instead of four. We'll see what happens so definitely if you are someone who also deals with something like that or if you don't know definitely look in depth at your utility bills make sure that you're actually having usage look at your last 12 months history the like graph that they usually will have that just shows you the usage that you've had for the past 12 months make sure you're checking on that to make sure that you're actually using the service and if you're not using the service but you're still getting charged a bill call them call them call them see what your options are because i'm so glad that we did this um, in our household i don't care if it's only 150 dollars every dollar counts and i don't want to be paying someone especially i don't want to be paying someone for something that we're not using so yeah that is my pro tip for anyone out there who might be in that same situation so moving on to what we talked about last week if you didn't see our very last video definitely go back watch that first we'll have it linked in the description but we had one successful week for me with the overtime challenge that i am doing for the last basically last week which was the full last full week of may and then the full month of june it actually comes out to be 30 days 30 working days because i am only going to do this challenge typically on weekdays so five days for last week and then the five weeks in june will have us at 30 days which actually makes it feel so much more doable because you just knock off a day so quick so going over last week's numbers, like I said, just to recap, the plan was to do three hours of overtime per day, which would be 11 hours of work each day. I will say that there are a few prior commitments that I had and will have also in June that is going to affect that in some ways, but ultimately it's going to get made up and I'm determined to still hit that 15 hour of overtime per week. So Monday, I worked two hours of overtime and I worked a total of 10 
hours. So I got signed in okay at 5 a.m. Actually ended up signing off at 3.30, which is my normal sign off time to go to the physical therapy appointment that I had that day at four. So couldn't work until 4.30, obviously. So Monday I had two hours, Tuesday and Wednesday I worked the three hours of overtime successfully, got off signed on at five both days and stayed until 4.30 both days. Um, the hour that I had to make up from Monday, I ended up making up on Thursday. So instead of working three hours of overtime on Thursday, I worked four. And then again on Friday, I worked four, which actually put me one hour above the 15. So I was at 16. And the reason I did that was because I'm literally crazy. And I was like, hey, if I'm going to have 30 hours per pay period for three paychecks, you know, in June and then the first one in July, then I want to also do 30 hours of overtime for the pay period that ends today on Sunday. So that way my first check in June, I have 30 hours of overtime on that check. All right, sorry about that. Had to pick a new location real quick, but picking back up where I left off, luckily moving forward, this challenge should be even easier because with how I have it set up right now, I still have my nights and weekends. So doing the three hours, five days a week, I still have my evenings and then the weekend I have to myself. And if I need to make up any hours, that might change things a little bit. But ultimately I shouldn't have to work that much more on the weekend. It's all gonna even out is what I'm saying. So moving forward, tomorrow is Memorial Day. So of course you guys know I'm already working that day. Of course, I want to take advantage of any extra money I can and my job does pay time and a half for any holidays work that they observe, which Memorial Day is one of them. Um, I plan to work the normal 11 hours tomorrow, which I know that that's going to actually increase with working on a holiday. It's going to count as more than 30 hours ultimately at the end, which I'm not going to count for or expect anything as far as like trying to plan or say, okay, how much is it going to be with the extra holiday pay? I'm just going to let myself be surprised when that paycheck comes, which will be the middle check in June. It is a three paycheck month for us. Moving forward in June, the thing that we are looking forward to a lot is splurge day. Just a brief overview is basically once we start hitting milestones with our mortgage we are going to start splurging because we do not splurge enough we are so strict with everything so moving forward basically whenever we hit a milestone balance such as the closest one being under 125,000, the next one will be under 800 under 75 50 so on and so forth we are going to start splurging and getting whatever we want to eat for the whole day of course the kids are going to be eating good too but we are excited because ever since we made this plan we're finally about to hit one of those milestones so we can go out and celebrate and we are set to hit that milestone this upcoming week so comment down below let us know what we should get to eat the kids everything so they're going to be eating out too so Circling back to the overtime challenge, one thing that's super exciting is obviously the last day of this challenge would be June 30th, but the way that it's actually working out, I actually have PTO planned for the first full week of July, but how it'll work out with weekends, I'm going to end up getting nine days off. So I think it's perfect because after doing this overtime challenge, working 15 hours a week, then I get a nice long break in July. During this break, my oldest will also turn six, so we'll be able to go use this extra money to have a good time on his birthday, do whatever he wants to do. He already told us that he wants to go to a trampoline park, so we're gonna have a good time doing that. And then when I go back, I'm expecting to go back to the 10 hours per pay, but don't quote me on that. You never know what could end up happening. I just changed my mind a lot. So that is everything that we have planned, what we've been doing. I wanted to catch you guys up to speed with all the money that there is to be made in the month of June. It really just reminds me of our why. One of the things that we talked about in our video about why we want to pay it off house is to really enjoy our money someday. One thing that is going to affect the overtime challenge this week, and I'm not making any exceptions for it, is watching game seven of the NBA playoffs right now. Like we mentioned in our last video, I've been getting super into it this year. I don't remember being this into it last year, but 
last night literally mind-blowing if you're not a basketball person i totally get it but the reason that this does impact this video is because it's affecting the overtime challenge but i want to document it too so last night may 28th watching celtics versus heat and literally the world thought that the boston celtics were going to lose but with 0.2 seconds left on the clock they won the game shocked the world the reason this is so dramatic is because they were down 0 and 3 and now they've come back and have an equal opportunity in game 7 which is tomorrow on memorial day anyway the reason that that matters is because i'm not missing it i will be staying up to watch game seven the game starts at 8 30. i may or may not sign in by five or overtime on tuesday so which means i'd have some more time to make up which i don't want to do because i already have to make up two hours because of appointments that we have on thursday and friday so hopefully i can get the will to just get out of bed but like i said i'm not missing that i'm watching that game i do not care like i'm watching that literally or hoping i'm hoping that history will be made in the celtics We'll win game seven. We'll see what happens. And anyway, I say all that to say, mark my words, we are going to an NBA playoffs game real soon. Between now and three years from now, which would be the first playoffs after the house is paid off or before the house is paid off, we are going to be sitting at an NBA playoffs game. I don't know if it's going to be a finals, like what's going on right now, because those tickets can get very very pricey like i was looking online and i saw like thousand dollars two thousand dollars on up so maybe round one or round two is a little bit more in our ballpark regardless i would have loved to have been at that game last night the energy was crazy even though it was in miami at the other team's home it was an amazing game so i would love to someday be able to go and see something like that in person and we're going to make it happen, just like we are going to pay off this house by 2025. It's going to happen. We're going to go and enjoy our money that much more when we get to that point where we want to save up to get to a playoff game. It's going to happen. For now, we'll focus on trying to save up for this couch. And thank you for watching. If you are new to our channel, please subscribe and we will see you in our next video.